Hey there, it's Peter here from Full Spectrum Performance, and whenever I have the feel for a nice delicious meal, I think of collard greens. So today I'm excited to teach you how to make collard greens with a wild rice medley, and you already know we're gonna have some veggie broth left over to utilize for future dishes. Now this is one of my favorite meals because not only is it, oh, it speaks to the heart, it's incredibly nutritious, and as I said, it's delicious. So, let's get to it. Now this is one of my favorite dishes. I make it at least twice a month, and for our ingredients we have one large onion, 10 shiitake mushrooms, 12 cloves of garlic, use as much as you like, I prefer my dishes on the extra garlicky and savory side, one tablespoon of vegan butter, and two big old bushels of collard greens. But before we get into these two bushels of collard greens, we have to prep the other veggies since they'll be cooked first. Starting with our onions, we're going to go ahead and cut them into nice thin ribbons. As you can see, we have some nice ribbons here, so we're going to use the big old pot, melt down this vegan butter, and lightly brown these onions on medium heat while we prep our other veggies. So let's get to it. Now our onions are cooking, so we're going to loosely chop up the mushrooms and mince the garlic. You're just going to want to cut these mushrooms into nice thin strips, it's very straightforward. And since our onions are starting to brown, we're going to go ahead and add these into the pot. Okay, our onions are starting to brown, that flavor and aroma is just so amazing. So from here, we're really just going to drop in the mushrooms and garlic. We're going to mix this up real quick. Let this stuff sweat for a little bit. Now I like to add my pepper and salt here. It's about a half tablespoon to a tablespoon. It really just depends on what you're feeling. And then the same thing for with that salt. Now I'm going to let this just kind of sit on top and chill for a little bit. While things kind of cook. And then give that a good mix. Now the key is we don't want our mushrooms to cook too much. Um, we're just more so trying to kind of infuse those nice flavors with the butter. And just let them sit on top of things while it cooks down and those juices blend. Now we're going to get into our collard green prep. Now these have already been rinsed and scrubbed down to get off any dirt and sediment. And to really prep these quickly, I like to go down the stem and pre-crack it from the leaf. Then you're going to take your little OK symbol with your hand and run it along the stem removing the leafy bits. Just remove any portions of the stem if you didn't quite separate it from the leaf fully. All you do now is just lay it down flat and repeat. Just for example, if you don't do this, you see here there's a good chunk of the leaf that doesn't come off. The pre-crack is a really good way to minimize yield loss of the leaf and also just time spent going through each leaf individually. I'm going to go ahead and prep the rest of these so we'll tap back in when I'm done. As you can see, we have these leftover stalks. Now, I don't like to throw these out. I'm gonna teach you a nice and simple kitchen hack that'll help you manage your kitchen and your waste. Here, we already have some asparagus cuttings in the bag, but I always like to save any big scraps and cuts for my veggies and freeze them. This is a two gallon freezer bag, and once it's filled, you're gonna be able to make a nice and tasty veggie stock. And the most important thing here is that you're minimizing how much food you're wasting. Every aspect of the food you're buying is going to be used to make a delicious broth. So again, be on the lookout for when that video drops. Now back to the main attraction. From here, you want to get the biggest leaves along the bottom and roll it up like a burrito. Then we just want to cut these along the middle. Still keeping things nice and contained. Now I don't go all the way through so the leafy burrito sticks together. And then from there, you're just going to cut some strips. This is called a chefinade style. And as you can see, they're about a finger width, but you can always make them smaller or whatever you prefer for your bite. Everything is going to cook down, so don't worry too much about it. This technique is again, somewhat of a chefinade, but if you really want to go and do a loose chop to get some more variety in your bites, go for it. And voila, all is chopped up nicely. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. So each serving of our greens for this recipe should be around 8 to 10 cups once chopped. Every stock is different, so that's a good ballpark, but you may need more than two stocks or potentially three depending on the size of the leaves. So let's go ahead and get this cooked up. Dump in our collard greens. Look at that. Because immediately those are going to start to get that liquid steaming and dropping in. So we don't want the mushrooms to cook down too much. So we're just gonna make sure that all the greens in here let those moistures cook out a bit to rehydrate them. And for our water, we're going to add a little more than a gallon. This is about 18 to 20 cups. Really, you just wanna fill it up as much as you can to cover the greens. And it doesn't matter how full it gets because you're gonna cook it down anyway. 
Once this gets to a boil, I like to reduce the heat to medium and just get a nice slow rolling boil going. Really just keep an eye on it so nothing cooks over. Now that the greens are cooking and reducing, it's time for that wild rice medley. This is an incredibly nutritious blend that provides great texture and depth to any meal. Here we have one cup of wild rice, one cup of brown rice, and one cup of barley. To prep your grain, as you should with any and all of them, we're going to give them a good rinse. So from here, we're going to fill this bowl up with water, massage the strain and grain it until the water gets clear. This usually takes about four rinses. First things first, if you aren't rinsing your grains, just understand you're eating dirt, whatever grime they get from transporting and processing. But in addition, it's going to transform and uplift the flavor and you're gonna strip away some of the unnecessary starches to ensure you get a nice, fluffy, individualized grain each and every time. But let's get back to it. As you can see, we have the bowl filled up with our filtered water and we're just going to begin our rinsing process by massaging it. Once that water gets real dark and cloudy, go ahead and strain, then repeat this process. Again, we're gonna do this about four times. Good, nutritious, and delicious food takes time. There's nothing wrong with that. It's an act of self-love because your body deserves the best fuel for it. When you get to this point, recognize that some of the coloring is naturally coming off the wild rice. Don't worry about it too much because you'll notice the difference from its first rinse to now. Since our rinses are complete, I'm going to get all this into a pot. In terms of water for the grain, I go by the knuckle test. This is more than three cups, and it's going to be tight considering the pot size, but I fill up the water until it reaches that first knuckle above the grain. And once you're filled up, go ahead and bring this to a boil. Once this is boiling, you're going to reduce it to a simmer and cover. Just make sure you give it a minute to adjust before you cover it so nothing boils over. So it's been about 20 minutes, and the key to cooking any grain properly is right here, not removing the lid until the final moment. So all that steam trapped inside keeps things cooking nice and evenly. So the big reveal, and here we are. Mm, so delicious. We're going to cover this back up and let it chill for a bit while we finish our greens. Now my favorite part. We'll just test to see how tender the collard greens are. And Ooh, boy, these are tasty. So jumping back to the spider strainer again, these are the types of special kitchen items that are linked in the description, so go ahead and check that out now if you haven't yet. But we're just gonna strain this into a separate bowl. And it's okay to have some of those juices with it. You're still really gonna want some for the greens to soak up and marinate those deep flavors even more as it rests or you store it in the fridge for later. And leftover is some amazingly tasty veggie broth to utilize for some delicious cooking. If you couldn't tell, I jerry-rigged this since I'm doing this prep solo, but I recommend a sturdier setup if you're alone. And if you live with someone, just ask them to hold the strainer briefly. But from here, we're just going to repeat this process until all of our veggie broth is in the jars. If you have any leftover amount that doesn't fit into the jars, just throw it into the collard greens themselves. Again, it's just gonna add to that flavor and marination of the greens. I just level things out in these jars and bam, there you go. You'll have anywhere from about 10 to 12 or more cups of delicious broth leftover. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and plate us some fixins. And here we have it, the final product. Now full disclosure, I usually don't fill the pot this high with the wild rice medley, but I'm prepping this mix for the week. Now you're gonna have plenty of delicious and hearty meals with this for leftovers, so don't worry about it. But first, let's add it to the plate and then top it off with some delicious collard greens. You already know I'm gonna add some juice to get that extra flavor, but there you have it. <laughs> I gotta have a little bit of a taste. Woo! Mm. So delicious, nutritious, and a hearty meal that really just makes you feel cozy and warm during the holiday season. And overall, is delicious any time of the year. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. And if you can, please share and hit the subscribe button. Slam that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content for myself and full spectrum performance. I love you so much. Let someone you know you love them. Take care.